Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching India's World with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Well, envoys of more than 60 countries on Wednesday visited a facility of Bharat Biotech, which is developing Covaxin, India's first indigenous vaccine for coronavirus. After landing in Hyderabad by a special Air India flight, the ambassadors and high commissioners reached the Genome Valley on the city's outskirts to visit Bharat Biotech and Biological E. The visit by the heads of foreign missions arranged by the Ministry of External Affairs is part of India's efforts to develop partnerships for the manufacture and delivery of vaccines. Last month, the diplomats were briefed on the vaccine trials underway in the country and efforts to manufacture and deliver the doses. At both Bharat Biotech and Biological E, the foreign envoys were informed about the progress made so far in the development of the vaccines and the rollout plans by both the companies after their vaccines get the approval from the regulators. The foreign envoys who travelled to Hyderabad were impressed by the progress made by the Indian drug companies. In this edition of India's World, we will analyse India's vaccine diplomacy. Joining me on the programme today are Professor N.K. Ganguly, former Director General of the Indian Council of Medical Research, Sriram Chaulia, foreign affairs expert and Gurjeet Singh, former ambassador. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of India's World. Ambassador, let me start the programme with you first. What do you make of India's efforts as far as vaccine diplomacy is concerned? I think uh, right at the outset, I must say we are deeply impressed that our company, our scientists, our research and development institutions have done well to bring us in the forefront so we could actually take diplomats and show them what we are doing. But let me take a step back. Diplomacy is the basis on which a country aggregates all its strengths and influence to achieve its national goals. So in the case of vaccine diplomacy, India's goal is first to secure enough for its own people, which we are doing partly through developing it and partly through securing dosages from countries who are also developing the vaccine. So I think Indian diplomacy has been quite successful and we are the country which has placed the largest number of orders, 2 billion doses, to bring it in. The second aspect which is more important is our own indigenous capacity and or not only of our own production, but of the production that our companies will do for developments of other countries. And this together will make us one of the largest suppliers of COVID-19 vaccine, much as India has been the largest supplier of vaccines for a range of diseases over the last decade. This puts us in a very strong position. The third aspect, I think, which is important is India's multilateral positions that we have, for instance, undertaken with COVAX, with Gavi, and with the WTO to make sure that the distribution of these vaccines is not hogged only by the rich countries and the rich developing companies, but is more democratically spread out among countries who may not be able to afford this very quickly. So I think that is the format I see India's vaccine diplomacy. Absolutely. So, Professor Ganguly, let me bring you into the picture now. You know, since we are here, since we are talking about how India has been extremely successful as far as vaccine in the past are concerned. So let's focus on what are India's strengths when we look at vaccine development. Actually, India supplies uh, is a major supplier of many vaccines around the world. Like world's 80% measles vaccine goes out from India. Africa's total meningococcal vaccine need, quadrivalent meningococcal vaccine need, goes out from India. The rubella vaccine for entire South America goes out from India. And rotavirus vaccine, it's a, the some of the new vaccines, India are in the forefront. So India is in the is one of the major vaccine supplier for the developing world and some of the developed worlds also, some vaccines for the developed world all. So it, it it needs few things to to be a supplier. You have to have a GMP production line, you need to be WHO pre-qualified. So most of the vaccine companies of India now meet these requirements. And it, it is reassuring if the people are brought over here and they see that India is a GMP producer and what are the timelines? Because as it was said, you have to book the vaccines in advance. 
so that you get supply. And you need a bouquet of vaccines because one vaccine supplier cannot meet your needs entirely. So that is why this was perhaps done to showcase India to the entire world about its capabilities. However, it is not all Indian vaccine which will be available, like Bio is making Johnson & Johnson's vaccine and uh, Serum Institute is making Oxford vaccine. So many of these Novavax vaccine is also being made by Czech plant by Serum Institute. So many of these um, out-licensed vaccine with the major vaccine manufacturers will also be manufactured in India. So um, in conclusion, this was a very wise step which was done because it is important that India be will become a major vaccine hub for the world. And it is good that they come themselves and see our facilities and also get the timeline of production. Because if you don't do this, you may lag behind. My last word is this, like many of the imports will also happen. Like, like America took only 100 million, although it, it booked for about 500, 600 million doses for Pfizer. So it has got a spare capacity. And as I have seen to, today, that Pfizer can also sell in India and distribute in India. So with this, I will stop my uh, comments. Okay, all right. Uh, Professor, for uh, putting that into perspective for us and telling us, you know, seeing is believing at the end of the day, and that's what India is doing, showing all the envoys really what is it that we are capable of and uh, they can see for themselves and, you know, make note of what it is that we are doing. All right, so Sridham Chalya, as far as uh, India is concerned, would you say that this is a major opportunity to impress the world? Yes, definitely, uh, Frank. Uh, we have the capacity, the manufacturing capacity, as well as the um, reputation. You see, uh, WHO has pre-approved uh, 47 vaccines uh, by, made by Indian companies and only five vaccines made by Chinese companies, for example. Uh, so it, this is a race. It is a kind of a vaccine internationalism. You know, so one is a vaccine nationalism where countries are not willing to share uh, uh, their um, uh, technology uh, for the betterment of the world. But Prime Minister Narendra Modi believes in vaccine internationalism. So, of course, uh, we are trying to secure um, uh, at least enough supplies for 60 percent of our domestic uh, population so that we get that herd immunity or whatever. Uh, and we are safe. But on the other hand, we are we have the capacity and the will to manufacture a lot more than what we need domestically. So that's where, you know, it's it's a soft power enhancement tool, you know, in that sense, because um, like uh, colleagues mentioned, there is, you know, a lot of demand for Indian medicines because of two reasons, safety and efficacy. And uh, by developing country standards, we have done very well. Uh, in fact, it's not uh, wrong to call uh, Hyderabad the vaccine capital of the world or India as the pharmacy of the world. So we are a medical superpower in that sense. You know, we have we have a lot of incoming uh, flows of people for medical tourism, for uh, affordable health care here. But also we export uh, not only vaccines, even cures. Like, for example, the antiretrovirals, um, which uh, brought down HIV AIDS across Africa, 80 percent or more of them have gone from India. So Indian generics, generic drugs, actually um, were game changers for Africa. Likewise, for our neighboring countries, I mean, I think the government has already uh, indicated to Nepal, to Bangladesh, to Myanmar, to Bhutan, and uh, beyond, ASEAN countries uh, and Africa, you know, tropical countries where we have an advantage. And I think we will uh, definitely outshine uh, the Chinese and the Russians because the Chinese and the Russians are in a hurry and they are trying to, you know, uh, jump the gun and not follow the full processes simply to score political points. You have, uh, Frank, a situation where the Chinese inoculated their own citizens, more than one million of them, without conducting uh, full even phase three trials. So India is a more responsible country. What we are saying, Prime Minister has said, is we are do we doing this for all humanity. And definitely we are not, we did not, the virus did not originate with us. We are creating the solution to the problem. The Chinese were the ones who started the problem in the first place. So I think we are in a very good position to actually be the long distance runner in this uh, vaccine race. 
and to emerge actually as a winner because see now of course is the rollout is just happening as you said approval still need to come in but think about it in six months eight months one year and until 2021 2022 india would have had the maximum impact on the global south right. where people really appreciate our contribution so i think our health diplomacy uh, the chinese are talking of uh, health silk road and all that but people are wary of the chinese for other reasons uh, including political conditionalities and all that we are not imposing those things we are saying we want to do this because our value system is vasudev kutumbakam we believe in the world as one family and like prime minister said we will and the the prime minister of bhutan uh, mentioned this uh, frank mm. uh, lotus share he said you know india is taking the lead in vaccine development and uh, is promising us uh, you know early fruit of that he says this is a source of hope for all of us in the developing world so i think that is what we are seeing now india is emerging stronger from this whole covid crisis we have managed to contain the epidemic to some extent within our country uh, and and not allow it to become explosive on the right. other hand the demand for our vaccines is going to continue growing and we will be stronger absolutely all right right then so building on the points that uh, shriram has just made uh, ambassador i'd like to take uh, one particular aspect forward with you you know as far as uh, the covid situation is concerned right from the beginning india has played a very important role be it uh, you know hydroxychloroquine then when we dis- when we thought that you know it was going to be a great cure or be it uh, remdesivir or any of these other drugs you know india has played uh, a lead and has also been open about you know discussing these matters with uh, with with the world and also providing solutions i think that is the salient point of india's uh, covid re- related uh, diplomacy to ameliorate the situation and this is the heart that uh, prime minister modi i think often speaks about the art of indian diplomacy so while on one hand you know our message to our neighborhood is that when we are going to look after our people we are also going to deal with you and look after you the second is immediate the beyond the neighborhood for instance asean for africa recently during the india asean summit prime minister modi spoke a lot about this and he also said there will be a million dollar facility to initiate some exchanges on covid related amelioration with africa we already have a 10 million dollar africa health fund which can be put to use and we already used part of it to send when to more than 20 african countries now there is an Asia Development Bank 9 billion dollar vaccine facility which has just been announced so i'm sure we can use that to provide vaccines to other countries there is the covax under which advance uh, orders by developed countries will lead to scaling up of production and reducing the cost which can then go to 92 designated uh, developing country and of course i think the biggest thing india has done is along with south africa approach the wto trips council to have a short term waiver on you know trade related intellectual property issues so that the vaccine uh, can be developed and distributed much more effectively to deal with the pandemic the interesting point here is that despite strategic convergence with a large amount of countries these countries are standing against india in wto because they are the main developers of vaccine and their companies don't want to give away the profits even now when faced with a global pandemic this Absolutely. is where of india is going to come out you know since we are here then uh, professor ganguly let's talk about this particular aspect as well you know as far as the uh, medical fraternity companies and even governments around the world are concerned uh how much do they collaborate you know they coordinate with each other as far as uh, medical development or vaccine development or you know just uh, medicine is concerned because you know i i i would like to bring your attention to this uh, aspect of astrazeneca and sputnik 5 uh, of course uh, coming together to try and see the efficacy between each other so is the level of coordination coordinate is, is it high or is it being done now because of the covid 19 pandemic actually globally this coordination is very well like uh, in uk they are giving pfizer they are thinking to give a part of them the astrazeneca vaccine when it gets ready unfortunately astrazeneca vaccine will be available in january now 
Previously, we thought it will be available in December, but that switch of vaccine is reality. It will, it, it is being seen that it might happen. So globally, there is a tremendous cooperation, like at least five different manufa global manufacturers are manufacturing in India. And as you had said, even the drug area, Gilead gave Remdesivir to several Indian companies. In, in the same way, it has happened to many other vital drugs or essential drugs. They know that India can manufacture anything, actually. If they don't give, we will manufacture. And in the COVID, we could actually put in a clause that this is a disaster and we can do it very well with observing all the rules. So that is why the, uh, it is being done. And, and another reason is this, that in the COVID, if we don't globally co cooperate, we will have to enact many laws about vaccination, moving from one country to another country, saving saving our industry, saving our trade. So cooperation is absolutely necessary. And, all, and the many of the things which we are learning in the control of the, this pandemic and disease, we are learning from each other, each other. So data sharing is another very major part because the China didn't share its data initially so nicely. We are in this particular trouble. But now we know that uh, that one person actually spend, spread to, to more than 2,560 people. One person alone spent it. The second thing which is happening, that the infrastructure development is happening globally. Like some of the vaccines which need lower temperature, airlines have enhanced their capacity to transport them. Like Emirate comes to India almost in every city. They have created capacity. They can flow vaccine from any place around the world to India and vice versa. They can take Indian vaccines to other part of the world. The, with the Luxembourg company, our test for the low temperature vaccine has also increased. The vaccine boxes, which will carry vaccine at low temperature, are also being manufactured in India. These syringes, which are needed, huge amount of syringes are also being manufactured through global uh, cooperation. Finally, one of the things which uh, we are learning which will be very, very essential. We are learning some, like we now know that it will, that we need a, to take history, whether there will be allergies or not. This is a very important part, which we are learning. We are also, learn, also learning from UK experience that at least for 50 minutes after vaccination, the person should stay in the facility. We, we are also learning that how many people you can effectively vaccinate. We now know that in one facility, it is it can, we can vaccinate about 1,000 persons at one given time. We have also learned, this is my last comment because we have a three-minute uh, uh, slot. We also know that these low-temperature vaccines can stay up to one week at three to eight degrees temperature. And these low-temperature vaccines will have to be taken out of the low temperature for three hours ahead. So huge number of information which is being shared between us actually is going to benefit us tremendously. We have also learned from the process of, of the, uh, by the FDA, UK FDA, US FDA and other FDAs that how careful we should be to really approve a vaccine and what should be the label claim. Like in the US FDA, label claim is now you can give it to 16 and above. Whereas a discussion is going on that can we give it to preg pregnant mothers and lactating mothers because mm. many of them are the healthcare workers. They need a vaccine. So Gates Foundation has initiated a discussion which is going to happen today. So all these activities are the global activities. And I think this is a most essential part in handling of the pandemics. Right. All right. So, Sriram Chaulia, since uh, you, let's talk about this aspect as well. You know, there is no doubt that there is tremendous goodwill as far as India is concerned. There is no doubt that, uh, you know, India is a medical superpower and there's so much that we can do for the entire world. At some level, can we also use this as leverage? Well, Frank, that's what the Chinese are, you know, very overtly trying to do. 
uh, Thailand and the Philippines, for example, uh, were basically uh, threatened that if they do not side with China on the issue of the inquiry in the WHO about the origins of the virus, then they will not get the uh, favorable terms for the Sinovac and Sinopharm uh, vaccines from China. Um, the Chinese also extract, they could possibly extract conditions from Indonesia over territorial disputes. I don't think we are uh, at all uh, into that kind of, um, you know, a cloak and dagger uh, style of diplomacy. I think ours is, a, we are a democracy. We are much more transparent. We are not hegemonic. Uh, you know, we believe, if, if, if uh, I may just, if I, if I may just word it a little better, rather than leverage, if we can say, if we can change the goodwill to gains. Yeah, you know, uh, there are, you know, the, the Chinese uh, pressure in our region is tremendous and uh, we are facing geostrategic competition, no doubt. And the vaccine race will help us uh, to withstand this competition to an extent. Because if India is fulfilling the major public health uh, requirements of strategically located countries, then uh, there is no reason for them to fall into the Chinese debt trap. The, you know, the, the Chinese now are saying the BRI is going to be the medium through which they will distribute the, uh, um, their vaccines. So we have a situation where they will want to extend the debt traps in the name of the BRI and you know, long-term loans and grants and such things. So I think uh, our approach will be always to win the hearts and minds of people, especially in the developing world, uh, where India is seen with very high regard as a non-aggressive and a non-imperialistic uh, power. And two, I think uh, our medical prowess, uh, like uh, colleagues mentioned, has already done wonders. The WHO at one point wanted meningitis uh, vaccines at less than 50 cents per dose. Nobody in the world could produce except India. Our own Serum Institute in Pune did it. So uh, I think there is this unique strength we have, like in IT services, uh, pharma, biotech also, we are very strong in vaccines, you know. This is something in which we are comparable to world powers or even superior. So this is where I think we need to, like, leverage is a good point. I mean, in the sense that, um, you know, where we do this and where we practically save humanity through the process when in a very crunch moment like this, crunch time, I think people will remember this and uh, we will need to institutionalize this cooperation further because like, for example, with Africa, we have the um, e-network, the e-health network and uh, post-vaccination also, you know, the I believe the, the ones, the people have to be monitored and India can provide the, you know, through, through a long distance mode, we can uh, provide those services as, as well. Of course, we have a large domestic population. People are always anxious. When will the corona cure come? I mean, the vaccines come within India. But I think we have the means and the capacity to be able to ultimately uh, do this on a you know, scaled up manner for the entire global south. So that's why I'm saying if you take a two to three year horizon, mm -hmm. I think uh, standing in the world will rise as a result of this uh, vaccine diplomacy that we are embarking on with a very clear vision and a pathway, you know, I think Prime Minister and his team, Dr. Jay Shankar, they are emphasizing. That's why they're bringing diplomats to see our capacity so that the diplomats are assured that we are just not talking the talk. We're going to walk the talk and we're going to transform the scene. You know, they are all in very, very dire need right now. And, right. Uh, you know, like the year of last resort, India is emerging. So that's a point for them to be re to remember and to recall when they have interactions on other aspects like trade and uh, business and, and strategic cooperation. True. All right. Time to get quick closing comments now from all my panelists with the best way forward. Starting first with you, Ambassador. Thank you. I agree with Dr. Cholia that this is a long-term plan and we should not look for short-term gain. I, I deeply appreciate what uh, our former DG of ICMR has said. You know, it is not only the vaccine. It is the delivery mechanism and the infrastructure around it. Also, we can do many things. For instance, you know, there are new... Uh, warehousing, special warehousing for vaccines coming up in Dubai and Ethiopia, which are transport hubs. And we should now contribute to those. And, you know, he mentioned syringes, gloves. So we have to go with the whole system. Third, we should certainly look for gains of providing a humane service to all our friends in the world. Having said that, you know, this is not trade. Much of India's pharmaceuticals are actually picked up by impact investors, by donors, you know, and by medicine sans frontiers and through COVAX, perhaps. So I think if we just stick to our game plan, 
we will, as usual, become the biggest supplier of COVID vaccine to the world. And that will be the service that we will provide. And that is something we should keep working for. Absolutely. Professor? Professor Ganguly? Actually, I want to give you one good news. I looked at the data which came up in NEGM of the Pfizer vaccine. Even after one injection, it is able to flatten the curve. So if this happens, it will be huge because second injection is the real problem. It has to be given after 28 days or 21 days, or very difficult to track. So I'm very excited looking at the data because although they cannot give, uh, the, the, at the moment, the issue is that it will have to be given as a two injection. Um, the, the, most of the vaccine trials have been done like that. But as the data gathers, the, I am hopeful that it might become a one-shot uh, thing. And finally, Hyderabad, as it was said, Aurobindo is uh, on the verge of starting making a COVAX vaccine. This is VAAX. This is not the Bharat Biotech COVAX. The, uh, the Hitero and Reddy's lab are going to make the Sputnik. So, and we will actually improve the Sputnik because they did it very hurriedly. We will do it much better. So, Hyderabad will become really in the map who previously Pune was. And one final good news is that Gen Genova's messenger RNA vaccine has got the note. And as I know, and we appeared in your TV together with Sanjay Singh, we, as we know, that likely Genova's messenger RNA vaccine will not be that temperature sensitive. It will be, be even better than Moderna's one, which is which has a lesser temperature requirement than Pfizer. All right, and uh, Sriram Chaulia, close the show for us with your concluding remarks. Well, Frank, uh, Indian uh, vaccine diplomacy, we are on two legs. One is the multilateral channel. We are supporting, we have already, Prime Minister has committed $15 million to the COVAX facility, which is uh, administered by the WHO and the Gavi. But we also have bilateral because there, you know, the, we are going to be sharper in choosing which are the most uh, priority countries for us in terms of uh, uh, economics, in terms of geography, in terms of geopolitics, in terms of maintaining India's influence, expanding India's influence. So all those factors will also come in. I expect uh, much of Asia and uh, Middle East and Africa and even Brazil, you know, in Brazil, they have had a controversy with the Chinese vaccine trials there. We expect uh, these large developing countries, even in Latin America, to come forward and use our uh, expertise to overcome this global crisis. So India, uh, Prime Minister has always said, is a Vishwa Guru. We believe that we have something to give to the world. All right. On that note, then I'll call it a wrap on this edition of India's World. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. What's coming out of this discussion is that India is a medical superpower and the race for a vaccine is a great opportunity for India to showcase its uh, medical prowess. Uh, the virus didn't originate in India, but we are doing everything that we possibly can to try and bring out solutions to the problem and we have helped the world in a great way and in a great deal. India is also taking the lead in vaccine development and is emerging stronger than ever before, especially at a very difficult time. There is tremendous goodwill for India and it's only going to get better. It will most likely translate, translate to gains as well in the time to come. With that, it's a wrap. See you again next time.